my name is Stephanie. Welcome to my channel, Edible Thoughts Makes. This episode is a little bit different from my other ones, and in this one, I primarily want to share with you some specific things on how I do some things. Um, I haven't quite figured out how I'm going to succinctly put it in some sort of title yet, but by the time this is published, I should have had that figured out. <laughs> so basically, um, I've had a lot of questions about how I, I guess it's like needle management um, when I am separating the sleeve stitches from the body stitches in knitting a top-down sweater. That's kind of a mouthful, so I'm not sure that will fit all in one sort of heading type of thing, but um, yeah, that's generally what I wanted to talk about, and then kind of some tips along the way on how I do things with that and what works for me. Now I feel like I do have some disclaimers beforehand to just kind of get out and one, this is not a product review, this is not sponsored, so I will be mentioning some needles and things like that that I use and tools that work for me, but in no way do I want you to feel like you have to have those tools in order to make this work for you. This is just what happens to work for me. Another thing is that I'm assuming you're going to be familiar with top-down sweater construction. This is not a tutorial. I will not be showing you how to like move stitches, you know, from the left to the right needle or how to put stitches on waist yarn or something like that. I will be mentioning it, but I won't be showing you how to do it. Um, there's lots of tutorials out there for stuff like that, so I would recommend looking on YouTube, Googling, um, things like that if you are unfamiliar with those things. Um, and yeah, I think I think those are my main disclaimers. So what I will be telling you is how I kind of go through the process of separating the sleeve stitches from the body stitches, why I do what I do, and basically what works for me. So let's get started. All right, so first thing is, let's talk about a top-down sweater construction. It can be a round yoke, raglan yoke, it doesn't really matter per se when you get to the part where you have to split your sleeve stitches and put those on hold and then work your body stitches and then you know put the other sleeve stitches on hold. So the pattern will tell you what to do. Um, sometimes your beginning around marker is under an arm, sometimes it's in the middle of the back. It just depends on the pattern and how the designer has made that. So that part doesn't really affect how I um, put my sleeve stitches on hold. Your options are to put those sleeve stitches on waist yarn, otherwise known as scrap yarn, just like a piece of yarn. Um, I usually keep somewhere a jar, oh, here it is. I usually just keep this little jar um, of little bits of yarn that are remaining, and I will use that for um, provisional cast-ons or, you know, putting sleeve stitches on hold as I need to. But um, what I actually prefer to do is to use short cables that are used in interchangeable needle sets. Now, if you don't use interchangeable needles, that's totally fine. Um, you can still just use the waist yarn and what you would do is get a, um, a yarn needle or a tapestry needle, which is a needle with a bigger eye hole there. And then you would thread your yarn through that hole, and then in the pattern where it tells you to put your stitches on hold, you would just put the needle through those stitches, and then, you know, if your yarn is long enough, you could tie like a loose knot at the end just to make sure things don't come out. Um, lately, I've been hearing a lot about these knitting, is it barber cords or something? I think they're maybe silicone or plastic cords. I've never used them, but it's the same idea, and then you kind of thread it through. I would recommend not using a yarn that's much thicker than the yarn you're knitting with, otherwise you might stretch out your stitches. Um, and likewise, don't use one that's a lot thinner because I feel like sometimes, and this isn't a huge deal, but sometimes your stitch will kind of like go in, if that makes any sense, and then like kind of pull in and then it can sometimes be harder to see to pick up, but you're not gonna drop any stitches. So what I like to do is, let me get some, out here. I have an interchangeable set from Knit Picks. 
It is their short interchangeable nickel plated needle set. And they have these small short tips, which are, I think are two inches or something. I don't know exactly, but I think about that. And they have cords. So I have my cords separated here in this holder by uh, length. And so I will use my 16 inch ones. So the cord itself is actually shorter than 16 inches because when you add on the short needles, it will be equal to 16 inches. And I will use these to hold my sleeve stitches. And it comes with stoppers. So the stoppers for this set look like these circle things with um, ends here that you screw onto the end of the cable. And that keeps it keeps the needles from falling off. And you see these little holes here? There's this um, locking, I don't know what you call it. It's basically just a metal stick, if you will. And you stick it into the hole and then it helps you tighten. And I do recommend doing that because sometimes things can come loose, um, especially um, with the needles. So then, what I will do is I will take a needle that's either the same size as the one that I'm using to be knitting that fabric with or smaller. That way I don't stretch out the stitches and if it's slightly smaller it can be easier to pick up or um, to pick up those stitches. So I'm going to lock that in place and then in the pattern when I get to the part where it says to put my sleeve stitches on waist yarn I will just use this and pick up all those stitches and then put them onto here. And then when I get to the number of stitches, oh, that's so tight, I can't get it off. When I get to the number of stitches that I am supposed to have, then I will unscrew this needle tip and then put the other stopper in place. And then those stitches are secure. I'm going to show you what that looks like on a sweater here. So here on this sweater, I have my sleeve stitches on hold and they have the stoppers um, and the short cable here. So then, when I get to the point where I want to knit my sleeves, I will just unscrew off this stopper, screw on the needle tip that I need, and it can actually be smaller or the same size, but I wouldn't go bigger, again, because you'll stretch out your stitches. Um, and then in my right hand, I will have the needle size that I do need to knit the sleeves and I will start knitting the sleeves. Now, if my sleeve circumference up here is going to be 16 inches, give or take some, then I can just directly put those needles right on. I would just take off the stoppers and screw on the needles and I can just start knitting right away, which is super convenient. But if my sleeve circumference there is going to be much smaller, it'll get stretched out and it might be uncomfortable to knit that way. So then you have some options. Maybe you like knitting your sleeves with double pointed needles. So I would still put on my needle here at the end and then I would just start using my double pointed needles like I would. And then if I don't wanna use those and I'm gonna do magic loop, same thing, just start knitting with your long cable and do your magic loop method. Now, if you like using small um, circumferences, small circumference needles, my favorite are these Chowgu, the blue set. And they come with three uh, cord lengths. And I've bought another set of just the cord length, not the needles. That way I can knit my sleeves two at a time in tandem. So it comes with a five inch, a six inch, and an eight inch. Now that's once you connect your, is that once you connect on the tips? Well, anyway, I can't remember right now, but I really like these uh, cords. They are memory free, they are super smooth, and the join is really smooth. Now these come with needle tips that are longer and shorter, and this particular set is a US 4 or 3.5 millimeter to a US 8, which is 5 millimeter. So these are the very short ones. And then each size also comes with a longer one. So the nice thing about that is then I can adjust the full total length 
you know, including the cord and the needle to whatever size that I need. So once I do that, I will get, you know, put together the length that I want to knit with, which oftentimes might be like a 12 inch. And then I can just start knitting it on. And I'll put like a stopper at the end, other end with, um, of the needle if I've just attached everything. And that way my stitches don't <laughs> fall off while I am knitting around my sleeve. But then I'll just knit basically them off this cable that has been holding them onto my new set, onto my new needles, and then I can just keep going. So that's the method that works best for me. I find it very efficient because I'm not spending any time slipping stitches off something onto something else versus just like knitting that round and getting going. Now, of course, it's not necessarily for like time saving because it does save some time, but really not that much compared to the whole scheme of knitting a sweater. But for me, I do feel like it's efficient. It works well. I don't have to worry about dropping stitches, missing stitches. And also by doing it this way, I can try on my sweater pretty easily. You can also try it on really easily if you use waste yarn, just have it long enough so that your arm can fit through. And yeah, I think that is it. Let me just double check my notes here to make sure I didn't miss anything. I think, I think that is it. And then also, oh, one little thing, not related to the cords or the cables, is that when knitting top-down sweaters, some people find that they will get little holes in the underarm area. And one way to solve that is to pick up an extra stitch on both ends to kind of close that gap. Another way is to not do that. And then um, just make sure you leave a long end when you are joining your yarn for the sleeve. And then just duplicate stitch you know, across that underarm, which is often what I like to do anyway, because that's a stress point and it will just give it extra reinforcement um, for that area. So it'll close up the holes and provide extra reinforcement. Um, but yeah, and oh, one more thing. I guess if you pick up those extra two stitches on your next round, you can just decrease so that you get back down to the stitch count that the pattern calls for. Um, yeah, so I think that is it. I hope this video was helpful and that you can kind of visualize what I'm talking about and how um, the process works for me. If you have something that works for you, let me know in the comments below or maybe you do something similar. But again, I just want to emphasize that you don't have to have any of these specific tools in order to make it work for you. I'm just sharing the process of what works for me. So happy knitting. Bye.